Well, I think the fun part about it is they're not like normal set photography. There was a union set photographer on set that we had to have that took the pictures that you see in like Entertainment Weekly. Those kinds of photos did happen too. But these are much more interesting because they're not taking pictures that are like the headshot that you see in typical publicity context. And it's much more their personal take on it. I can't remember which way this picture goes. It's your call. Since I was working as Mike's assistant, when he asked me to take pictures, I just thought I'll just keep my camera on me at all times. It really felt kind of like a journal that it was instinctual, it was very personal, and because the crew was small and the actors were really generous and it was very comfortable, it was easy to just to take lots of photos. In a way, it wasn't that big of a jump. It's the same way if like when you take pictures on the street and you kind of want to like meld into the background or be invisible. It was just like that within this little world of the film. You know, originally I was just designing for this wall. Yeah. A color, the color one in the middle of it, and then the, all the black and white ones around it, which I could still do. The reality of being on film sets is it takes a lot of time and you're waiting around and the actors are there and then they're gone. And usually when they're on set, they're acting, so you certainly don't want to disrupt what they're doing. I feel like taking pictures on the set like that, you can't really pose too much of an idea or a construct on the pictures because what I was doing was secondary to what they were doing. So I tried to just kind of be a fly on the wall and look around and see what was interesting to me. There's the one of you. Oh, cute. I always say cute when I see pictures of myself. I didn't ask them to photograph anything in particular, just sort of be around and do whatever you want. The take on it wasn't like, take pictures of the film. It was always like, do your own version. That's what's way more interesting. I thought I could get the best pictures and also capture the essence of the film and my relationship with Mike if I just trusted my instincts and was intuitive. So I spent a lot of time walking around taking pictures of plants and orchids and Mike, and I just, Try not to think about it, I guess. Honestly, I feel like I was so busy just being Mike's assistant that none of that conceptualizing mm. went into it. I mean, a lot of those pictures are me running to talk to somebody or, or running to make a phone call. Or I realized that if I didn't have my camera on my shoulder at all moments, I wasn't going to take any pictures. Is that distance good, though? Yeah, distance is good. Yeah. Perfect. I'll, um, um, I'll continue. I was writing this script for like many, many years, since like shortly after the Civil War. So I had a lot of time to like think about it and develop these things. I wrote the history of sadness in the script. So then at some point I needed to start drawing the history of sadness. But a lot of those drawings I wrote. I wrote like large boulder on top of body. I wrote a lot of them out just because that's the way I think. So I was just trying to figure out what would a history of sadness look like? What does Oliver, this character, draw like? And I started drawing a whole bunch of different ways to kind of figure it out. I drew for years, I drew a lot of different things, and only a bit of it got in the movie. That's when I was psyched when the book idea came around to put them all in. It's funny, I remember when I first started working for you, one of the first things you said was, just make sure that I do these drawings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a whole other layer. There's the film that lives on, and then there's these other things from that experience that live on. I guess that it's a document or something. 